to read some older poems today and some that I wrote at uh, Naropa Summer Writing Experience this summer. Oh hell, instead of a poem, I will just include a list of websites. Rainforest. Rothke knew his stones, bear creature poet raging in the woods, drunk beyond his limit, made of himself a myth. His furious strength shattering the university's wall of glass, throwing a filing cabinet in a fit alone in the wet trees he would lay his face upon the moist, cold predictability of earth, fire, animal, geography of grief, his spirit haunting passion, turning over words to find a truth. Finding freedom in boulder. Chair back cages, his pan explodes, he loses his spring, his pants down below the continental divide line in his butt. One said, the cat made me an owner. Yesterday, a dimple-faced counterman without a bottom half flashed into me his optimism. Eyes, my eyes. Last night, the trees careening branches, will-o'-wisps tracing messages in zephyr space, a hummingbird fighting to hold to flower in the cement place. Pseudo rocks pumped empty music on the vacant street. Overhead, a grasp away, the moon almost complete. Today in the common room, on the phone, she says, schizophrenic like a wolf, weaving her argument from authority to an unseen friend. Last night, I found two silver dime eyes looking up at me in the bathroom stall. Pastiche dialogue. Are you tied too to the moon? He calmly asked his cow-eyed friend. The teenager told me, I can't go to the movies alone. I feel funny, like uh, I didn't have anyone. Betty, the 60-year-old, lay face down, careless among the steel pins, her voice exhausted from stitching costumes all by herself in order to forget the 80s, which took her husband, father, son, and a nephew, more dear to me than my own children. Every three years, as regular as clockwork, I didn't have time to finish mourning. It was an illicit affair, the female lawyer said. So we went to Terrace, the priest and I, to avoid God's wrath. The young blonde widow weaving the dance pulled back her hand, clasped warmly, beseechingly. You married, he asked. No. Divorced? No. Single? No, a widow. Falling back, dropping her hand, he said, I don't do death. The summer goldfish swimming in the springtime pond circle the summer around, unaware of winter gold. Outrageous things I will not do today. I will not lay nude on the elevated deck, scars, cellulite, skin loose and tight, exposed to the neighbor's eyes. I will not hook up a CD player to auxiliary speakers, its tearing sound, stripping the trees of leaves and dance, a heavy metal hip hop new age convergence. A year 2012, Isadora wearing only curtains which are clearly curtains clasped around me with clothespins. I will not paint just one half of my face as a Brazilian butterfly and go to Costco, drifting my way through giant shelves lyrical between upright stems of metal. I will not carve a monolith of two people copulating in spray painted red to scent as a temple to the vigor of summer lust looming above my white picket fence. 
I will not weave colored ribbons through my gate and hang goat cheese, small white and yellow balls of goat cheese on the end of each ribbon with a sign beautifully calligraphied saying, take one, be happy. Selections. He wants to have his feet rubbed softly and his eyes seen almost every time he takes a stand. His manhood pumped up for the living and she wants to be heard. Her voice only softly speaking once over lightly to his shell-like ears. And he wants to be free to go and come frequently down her body ridges, finding a grasping in her center, grounding him gently. And she wants his over the head strength to where she cannot all on her own tiptoes to be off balance alone. And he wants to look in her mirror and see a flaming stud creature snorting and churning back the earth dangerously. And she wants to laugh at all, at all of it, tumbling over one another like his and hers in the dryer clothing, the wanting warm and mixed and shifting so domestically safe and comical, it's hard to watch.